Hello, my name is Mark Medley. You probably know me as the critical thinker, as you've probably been getting my Facebook entries and Twitter entries, constantly advertising the critical thinker as well as the blog entries themselves. I launched the video blog of the critical thinker on last week, and since that time, many of you have asked, well, what is the critical thinker? The critical thinker is a blog and it focuses on things that for the most part we would probably take for granted or not notice or just don't give a whole lot of thought to. And that's where the critical thinker came from. I started the blog in March of 2008 actually surrounding the whole hoopla around the statements made by Reverend Dr. Jeremiah Wright that were totally taken out of context. And the first entry, if I recall back in 2008, was dealing with what is it about the truth that we have such a hard time with. Dr. Wright actually was speaking the truth, and we had a hard time dealing with that. So that was the first entry, and then I moved into another entry concerning the use of the word outrage. If you ever look at the news, just about every clip had some community or some individual that was outraged. And it just got to the point where I was just tired of hearing that word. So I did a little research and looked up to see how many times that word is used with the media. And you would be amazed how many times the media use the word outrage. So I wondered, is there some other word that they could have used? Many ask, well, what caused you to write such a blog? What caused me to write such a blog was I personally don't think many of us give much thought to things, that we just glide by, we take a three-second sound bite, just move along, and really don't give a whole lot of thought. Again, another example, one of the entries that in, is in the blog deals with this whole notion of having to have a sign by law posted over the sink in a restaurant for an employee to have to wash their hands. Now one would think washing the hands would be common sense after using the bathroom, but obviously I guess it was not because laws had to be passed and all of these little signs are posted that says employees must wash hands after using the toilet or the bathroom or what have you. It makes one wonder, well if that little sign wasn't there, would they not wash their hands or had they not been washing their hands? What happens to those who disregard the sign? something to think about, something to critically think about. Some of my latest entries dealt with this whole thing with Charlie Sheen. I definitely believe that if we were, had ignored Charlie Sheen, it wouldn't have gotten to this level. Not to mention, CBS actually was teeter-tottering on whether or not they should let Charlie Sheen go. So one of the entries was, it's about time, when they finally did let him go. There's one entry dealing with this whole notion of when we do the moving up of the clocks from in the fall and in the spring, one hour ahead and one hour behind. You would be amazed how many people really believe that the day shortens to 23 hours or moves up to 25 hours whenever the time changes, not realizing that it's just for that one day. These are the type of silly things that I can kind of poke fun at, but at the same, t same time make you think. So. I encourage you to go to The Critical Thinker. It's at www.thereadingcircleblog.blogspot.com. I began to blog, as I said, in March of 2008, and it has come along in 2008, 2009, 2010, and into 2011. And as you will see, each year, I've actually posted more and more postings or entries into the blog. And again, sometimes it's funny. Sometimes it's, it's little things that we just, and other times, they are, it's serious. We had the time whenever Reverend Jackson, Jesse Jackson, was on the microphone and made a major league faux pas. The same thing with Vice President Joe Biden. So there's a, there's a posting in there in terms of step away from the microphone. And again, it was poking fun, but at the same time, it's a serious issue. One of the entries dealt with pet peeves. What is your pet peeve? I know one of mine certainly is clothes hanging out of a drawer. Matter of fact, the picture in the entry is clothes hanging out of a drawer. You'll see it there if you go to the site. As a matter of fact, the title of it is What is Your Pet Peeve? Two weeks ago, I was at Seton Hall University and it was an academic event. There was no press coverage. Had there been an athletic event, it probably would have been full of press, particularly had there been a star quarterback or a star running back or a point guard or center. But because it was an academic event where children were espousing social studies and historic facts because it was New Jersey History Day. There was no press coverage there yet and, and 
even in still, we had an auditorium full of parents and teachers. Still, that was something that the press should have caught as well. That's what the critical thinker does. It looks at various issues that we may or may not have given thought to. If you've ever watched the show Seinfeld, Jerry Seinfeld does a wonderful job at poking fun at things that you just, is the everyday mundane. And sort of the critical thinker kind of does the same thing on paper, except for we look at very serious issues. So again, I ask that you go to www.thereadingcircleblog.blogspot.com and I challenge you to go through the entries from 2008 to 2010. Some you'll laugh and some you'll like and some you'll disagree with. Again, for example, there's the Fitted Cap, which is a brand of baseball cap. Somewhere along the line, someone must have forgotten to take off the little round sticker on the brim, and now everyone thinks that's fashionable. I think it's silly. That's my personal opinion. Another issue I tackle is the whole thing of sagging pants. It is beyond me as to why anyone would want to wear their pants halfway below their behind. How they would have to use their thighs and their knees to keep them up. That truly is a skill. But the question is why? The question is, why would we want to do that? I can't imagine any female finding that sexy, nor any male finding that cool. And yet, that's what we see. Issues like that are dealt with in the critical thinker. So again, I will say, go there, www.thereadingcircleblog.blogspot.com. Take a look at it. Click on, make your commentary. The second part of it, because the critical thinker is actually a part of the reading circle. The reading circle is the parent, and the critical thinker is the child. And the Reading Circle is actually a talk radio show that I host on Saturday mornings from 6 o'clock a.m. to 7 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time on WP 88.7 FM. Also web streamed around the world on www.gobrave.org. Another wonderful opportunity to use your critical thinking skills as I have the opportunity to talk to authors. As I have the opportunity to pick their brains as to you know, how did you come up with your concepts? Where did you get your ideas from? What was the book about? Were you always a writer? And you have the opportunity to hear their stories. Again, another chance for you to think. And so again, that's the Reading Circle with Mark Medley. That's heard on Saturday mornings, 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time. Again, on WP 88.7 FM and on www.gobrave.org. You can find out more information about that by going to my website, www.thereadingcircle01.com. And again, going back to The Critical Thinker, you can go to the blog itself at www.thereadingcircleblog.blogspot.com. As various issues come about, I will, of course, continue putting them on paper, but I'll also discuss them in these clips, whether it be on YouTube or Ustream, and you have the opportunity to think. As you look around, take the time to just ask yourself for some of the things that go on. Does that make sense to you? I challenge you again to do that, and I thank you for listening.